Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another course vlog. We're out here next to the ocean in Huntington Beach. This is the Huntington Club, one of Travis Matthews' private country clubs. It's a really, really nice place here in Huntington Beach, California. Hey, if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Right out to number 10. Here we go. Starting right next to the driving range here and short of the beautiful clubhouse, the 10th hole is a challenging par four. This entire back nine is really tricky, especially off the tee. You have got to position yourself properly in order to get yourself close to these hole locations with these fast and tricky greens. It's all gonna come down to putting. Lay it over the bunkers there and the fairway will open up, but it does drop down severely to the left-hand side into a little bit of a dry creek. This whole location front right, right over that bunker on the right hand side, it's gonna come into play. Now the two iron was really working for me today. Off the tee, a little draw over those bunkers and perfectly right down Main Street, leaving myself a comfortable gap wedge here into this right hole location. I was just going from the middle of the green here. That's all you need to do. 15 feet for birdie, and I just couldn't quite get it here after 10. It was a slow day today, and a long wait, especially from the clubhouse there into the 10th hole. A little rusty coming out of the clubhouse, but it's all right. We're gonna find our way here on the 11th hole. It's another severe drop off on the left hand side. The fairway is a good 15 feet above that water hazard on the left. So hopefully it won't come into play. No bunkers to deal with off the fairway though, only into the green as they do perch up high with big flashing lips that really visually protect this green. So that hole location on the right looked like it was just barely over the sand trap. Now I said that two iron was working. Any par four under 200, I really don't need my driver. I mean, under 400, it's not really necessary to get that driver out there. So a little bit of a chop down nine iron here into the breeze. It's coming up hard here in the afternoon. It's gonna be affecting about 25 yards worth of club if I'm going straight into it. Just couldn't get that birdie putt to commit. I was lucky to get the approach over that bunker, to be honest with you. A comfy tap in par back to back, and we head on to a par five. Now the wind is coming off the right hand side, so it should be helping us on this par five. And at only 530 yards, we should be able to have a go. It's gonna dog leg hard to the left around the corner here and you're not gonna see that water hazard from the tee, not until you get out there to that corner, revealing all the trouble in front and around this green. It's a little bit of a horseshoe green all the way around that water hazard, and depending on the hole location is how tricky it's going to be. On the right, no water needs to come into play. You can roll your ball right on up there, but today it's way over on the left, bringing all the trouble into play. Now I tried to hit the big draw with the wind, but this one ended up just going straight down the right hand side and down into the rough. I was lucky enough to have a look at it though. Just over 230 yards to the flag. This was a big five iron for me out of the rough. Up and down wind, flying with that wind. It got a ton of distance on it. Flag high off to the right hand side. It should be just a little bit of a pitch. Oh no! I know you can't pull it on chip shots. And that probably would have gone long if the stick wasn't there, but damn, it would have been nice if it fell. Nothing like a kick in birdie though, huh? Now on to one of the hardest par threes I've played in a long time. 235 yards from the tips. There's actually one more tee box back there that they use for some crazy tournaments that sits at almost 300 yards. This is a beast. But luckily, today it was downwind to a front hole location. So, a carbon copy five iron from what I just wanted to hit on the last hole, but this one I tugged just a little bit. 
flag high. I had to play a big high pitch shot over the bunker here. Just an open face lob wedge. Nothing really tricky about that. Laid it down to six feet under the hole. And it was time to trust the flat stick once again. No problems when you're underneath the hole playing picture perfect greens. You should be able to see right where that ball is going. Now, the most difficult hole on the back nine is this long and tricky par four. A ton of sand down the left hand side, and then it gets even more difficult. A lake comes into play off the tee about 280 yards down the right. That's going to take driver out of my hands. It feeds across the fairway down into another lake on the left. So everyone's going to have to go over the water and onto this perched green surrounded by traps. And as you see the ocean off in the distance, this is probably going to play into the wind. Now I tried to trust the two iron again, but I got a little tuggy with it once again, just like the five iron on the last hole left was terrible in the bunker was not where I wanted to be. And I had to pull a six iron here from nearly 195 yards into the breeze. This was all the club I could get on it. Hit a great shot, really. It was pin high way up on the hill here off to the right. A pitch shot down to about 20 feet was all I could do. I had a look at it for par, though. Well, turn it, turn it in. Nah, perfect golf isn't meant to be. It's all right. A bogey is what it is back down to even par and we got four to play this par four 15th hole is relatively simple sitting only at 400 yards it's going to play slightly back down the hill and well like i said it's just kind of what you see here a nice little reprieve after that last difficult stretch that par three and par four 13 and 14 was not to be messed with you get a little bit of a breather here the difficulty really can be the green. It does slope away from you towards the right hand side, kind of down towards the ocean and protected by those two bunkers. It's all you really want to play with. Uh, it felt good to really have the driver back in my hands. That's my most comfortable club in my bag and I really love sending it right down the middle. A nice comfortable sand wedge here, just a knock down to this back flag tried to hit a precise 100 yards, and well, I didn't. I got really pissed off. <laughs> Threw the club like I shouldn't have. Oh man, I'm even par, and I'm just expecting a whole lot more out of myself. Could not shake it over that chip shot. Hit a terrible one to about eight feet, but recovered my brain over this putt and hit a fantastic par putt right in the back of the cup. Oh my God, that felt so, so good to come back and finally make that putt. Now the last par for the day is gonna be heading straight down the hill back towards the ocean. It's a little bit of a blind tee shot though, up and over the crest and then down towards the green. No bunkers from what I remember off the fairway and I think the drone is gonna confirm that. Yep, there's no bunkers down there. So. Lay down a tee shot as much as you got. Get it all you got to give it down in over the hill. You hopefully have a look at it. It's going to be an awesome little approach shot down this hill. Look at that fancy little bunker sitting about 15 yards short left. That would be a tricky shot if you were in that bunker. Nice and smooth with the driver right into the wind here, straight back down towards the ocean. I tried to keep it low and keep it straight, but I got a little pushed with it off into the rough. Another shot I really had to knock down here. I had about 154 yards and I took my 175 yard eight iron and tried to chop it down underneath the wind and got it pin high, but off to the left hand side. This chip shot rolled out a little bit farther than I expected right underneath the camera. I moved it to reveal this eight footer for par to keep this round alive right at even par. It was meant to be, and we can head to the last par three. 17 is a difficult one, 215 yards and straight up the hill. It's a blind green. You're not gonna see a thing from down on that tee box. 
So when you see the whole location today all the way in the back, when I was down on the tee box, I had no idea it was all the way back there. I just flushed a seven iron here downwind and uphill, took my 195 club, got it pin high, and I really wanted this birdie putt. Oh! No, 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 no. Absolutely evil. That was so mean going into 18. We're even par, one hole to play, and it's a par five under 500 yards. And ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you I've hit about 500 tee shots off this hole, they've all been from the white tees. During scramble events, I could typically clear this water hazard on the left, leaving people a nice little 100 to 125 yards in the green on the par five. But today from the black tees, all that trouble comes into play and we're gonna have to hit something precise. A awesome closing hole here at the Huntington Club over water into the green for everyone into this little peninsula green sitting up above the water hazard as well. Now I tried to turn over a draw into the wind, but it was the same fate as the 16th hole and I pushed it just a little bit off to the right, just over the bunkers. It was down by the cart path and I thought I had a line right through the trees and onto the green, but I was ultimately a little bit too ambitious. Through the trees and into the water, we drop number three and hit number four up close and onto the green up to about eight feet, 10 feet maybe, underneath the hole to shoot even par on the day. What a day out here, huh? We'll see you all next time.